Statement 11 uh, of chapter 3 and statement 12 uh, closely uh, related. So let's look at these two statements today. Uh, statement 11, the established and the natural misdeeds are the same. In statement 12, vice and downfall are not different but the same. The established and natural misdeeds are the same. Vice and downfall <coughs> are not different, but the same. Uh, so these two statements here is related to um, uh, kind of um, terminologies that are found uh, in the study of the Vinaya. So the Vinaya being right one of the three collections of the Buddha's teachings. Yeah. The sutras or the discourses, the vinaya, yeah, the uh, discipline, conduct, uh, uh, rules, regulations, guidelines, and then the further dharma or the higher dharma, the abhidharma. Right? These three being the three, uh, called the three baskets, literally, uh, tripitaka, as in, you know, when all these were written down. They constitute three baskets. So in the Vinaya basket, in the Vinaya collection, which primarily is divided, uh, the, 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 all the texts related to Vinaya uh, basically deal with two topics. Uh, one, it's the individual uh, rules uh, that are found uh, for like fully ordained monks and the individual rules pertaining to fully ordained nuns, the individual rules, uh, vows, precepts uh, for novice monks and nuns, uh, each of the rule, uh, how the rule came about, mm, what were the circumstances that led to the Buddha creating that, mm, uh, the things that then happened later, uh, people trying to like work around those rules, and the Buddha having to Use more precise language, you know. Uh, it's actually, uh, when you read that section, it, it can be kind of funny. Uh, funny in the sense that you see, oh my gosh, you know, even when the Buddha was alive, there are people, yeah, people like us, you know, really today, uh, you and me, we, we see that, oh, Buddha says, please don't do this, this, this. Then we say, well, how can we define this? You know, <laughs> so even in Buddha's time, you know, there are those who. Uh, now we have professionals called lawyers, right, to help you figure out, you know, uh, how to work around, you know, uh, the word of the law. So then Buddha had to like, you know, define more clearly. Here, when I say <laughs> this. It means, you know, la, 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 la. <clears throat> so there, there is that. Mm -hmm. Then, mm, a smaller uh, amount of material deals with uh, procedure, procedural uh, matters. Uh, like if someone has broken a rule, you know, how do you have a hearing in during the hearing, you know, what kind of witnesses are needed and this and that and things like that, procedural matters. So this is all in the Vinaya collection. I, as I said, you know, in the last uh, class, uh, in the Tibetan tradition, they say, you know, lay people should not look at these things. <laughs> It's not your business. So there is a reason, you know, for that, for sure, for that tradition. Because uh, I think one thing that you can think with, that we can say is that uh, when when you you know when lay people you know, learn about these things, mm, mm, you can become you know uh, overly critical. Uh, of the uh, behavior hmm, of uh, monks and nuns. 
You can become overcritical, and then you can like busy yourself finding faults of other people, of monks and nuns. So not not a good idea, you know, to have this judge judging mind. So that's that's generally, I I would say, why you know, and they also then monks and nuns themselves are said are not allowed to discuss with lay people uh, internal matters. Again, this is then here it is I think to prevent monks and nuns from like recruiting lay people uh, to support them in their internal, <laughs> you know, uh, disagreements and fighting. Humans are humans, you know, even monks and nuns are human beings. And you, when you live in a the community, there are disagreements and this and that. And then when you start to like, you know, hint or tell to lay supporters, oh, you know, so and so, <laughs> didn't follow this rule or that rule. So then you get it all messy and, you know. So knowing these rules uh, in these ways, not good. But if we know these rules, if, but if I are uh, now, now my personal opinion, if we want to know about these rules, even though we are not monks and nuns, but if we want to know about these rules, I think based on the principle uh, that Jigden Sungen uh, articulates, uh, which is that Mm, although we have not taken these, we have not made the commitment to observe these rules, underlying each of these rules mm, is a karmic principle, uh, a principle of karmic causality that is nonetheless relevant to you and me. You know? Like I said, you know, all these detailed rules about, you know, uh, how big your sitting cloth can be, what material it can be made from, and what material it cannot be made from, you know. The underlying principle there is, don't, don't uh, consume more than you need. <laughs> When you consume more than you need, that is a fault, right? So the rule that says, you know, a monk or nun should have only a set of robes that can consist of the lower robe, then the under robe and the outer robe, even though we may not have taken this vow, there is an underlying principle, right? <clears throat> Which is again related to don't consume more than what you need. Simplify, simplify. <laughs> After, you know, understanding that point, you know, it's not necessarily that, you know, now, okay, now I'm going to go. Uh, buy robes and wear them, you know, that might be another way of over-consuming. <laughs> Instead, maybe after, you know, reading about that, learning about that, you know, today, you know, we can go to our clothing, uh, wardrobe, uh, take everything out. Mm, this is the Marie Kondo technique, <laughs> if you have heard of her. She says that storage is simply hiding away what you don't need. <laughs> it says if you want to simplify yeah, your clothing, it says don't organize them. Take them all out and pile them in a big pile in the living room. All of it, yeah, from different uh, places, different locations, yeah, maybe uh, just not your own room, mm, you, because you have in your guest room, you also have your clothing hidden there, you know. So they say, take all of them and put them all in the living room. 
uh, living room because you have to see it, you know. <laughs> then when you can see, you know, the amount that you have, then you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> These are all my entanglements, you know, piled up, reaching the ceiling. Then, this I don't need, 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 this I don't need. <clears throat> Take it to somewhere where somebody else may need. Then make an offering. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so I think with, with that uh, kind of uh, motivation if if we learn a little bit about what these um, monastic rules are it can be helpful and so here i sent a link in the chat of the uh, theravada uh, vinaya and the individual rules uh, there are three main Vinaya systems in the world today. The Theravada system, based on 227 rules for monks. There is the East Asia, Chinese and Korean and Vietnamese system, uh, which is the Dharma Guptaka system. It's 250 um, precepts. And then there is the Tibetan, Himalayan, Bhutanese, uh, Mongolian uh, system, which is the Mula Sarvastivada, that's the 258. Yeah. But the 227 is uh, available in translation and extensive discussion. Uh, and in the Theravada tradition, there is no taboo uh, in having lay people. <clears throat> and that's why they have translated and they have made available. They, they don't see it as a, a, a big problem. So it's up to you, you know, if you you have curiosity. But again, like I said, you know, don't don't go read these things and then, you know, have a judging mind and looking at monks and nuns and say, oh, they're not following this, they're not following that. You should not do this, you should not do that. You know, that sort of, don't, don't do it that way. Anyway, this these two statements, they are, Kyoba um, Rinpoche is, um, addressing some technical terms uh, that have been used in this Vinaya uh, basket collection. And so the terms are uh, the difference between establish uh, uh, and natural misdeeds. So that's one. So here, right, it says establish and natural misdeeds are the same. Mm -hmm. Establish and natural misdeeds. Then another set of uh, kind of technical terms found in the Vinaya is a vice and downfall, mm -hmm. or sometimes translated as uh, uh, misdeeds or evil deeds and transgressions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first pair, establish and natural. <clears throat> is talking about mm, mis, what are considered misdeeds or evil deeds or negative deeds, those that are naturally and those that are mm, established by the Buddha. So what does it mean here? The most common example is they say, for example, the five lay vows. The five precepts of, of, of householders, of lay people. Mm -hmm. The lay people are encouraged to take and to observe and to keep. Mm -hmm. They say out of the five, the first four is natural. Naturally, they are like that. Mm -hmm. Meaning killing, stealing, mm -hmm. sexual misconduct mm -hmm. or adultery and lying. 
they say these four things, they are naturally negative. Whether you have taken the vow or not, if you create any of these four types of actions, naturally it's a fault. Then the fifth one, intoxicants. Having the mind impaired by taking substances that cloud the mind. That one, they say, that is a established misdeed. Meaning, in itself, it's not negative. <laughs> but the Buddha established that as a rule to prevent us from, when intoxicated, create all the other misdeeds. So this is a very common uh, uh, division. Of course, uh, so then they will say, uh, such as, uh, mm, not eating after noon, like the novice uh, and the monks and nuns vow. That is a prescribed, established rule. That eating afternoon itself, oh, that, that's, that's not a na naturally a misdeed. Or not using perfume, not using things to beautify the body. Those are, they say, they are prescribed, established misdeeds. But here Jigden Zuman says, Natural and established. <clears throat> Don't get carried away by these vocabulary. Natural and established misdeeds, they have the same faults. Uh, you, at this point, you know, should not be surprised by this statement. Because we already know, you know, Kyoba Rinpoche's position about this, this, this matter is that, you know, when the Buddha proscribes, when the Buddha says, you know, don't do this or don't do that, it's because naturally doing those things is creating the causes of suffering. Yeah, so intoxication, the mind being impaired, is a cause of suffering. So it doesn't matter. In fact, everything uh, the Buddha uh, uh, proscribed, right, tell us we should not do, you can say all of those are established misdeeds, but why did the Buddha establish that as a misdeed or establish, you could say, identify? Why did the Buddha identify that as a misdeed, as a negative deed? Because by nature, they are negative. Yeah. So Kyoba Rinpoche, when he says, you know, in 310, by uh, 311, the established and the natural misdeeds, they are the same. That is because, you know, uh, you can imagine, you know, his disciples or people who come to see him, you know, they are trying to get around some of these rules. And then they will say, oh, these rules of natural misdeeds, that, that we have to keep. Uh, then the established, uh, the so-called established, uh, such as, oh, drinking, oh, that's okay, you know, as long as we don't get carried away, drink a little bit, it's okay. <laughs> so they're trying to get around, you know, they say, oh, that's just, that's just proscribed to prevent us from doing the really bad things. But Kilburn Bajir says, no, actually, if you know, getting slightly intoxicated can be okay, then the Buddha should just say, you know, 
Don't get so intoxicated that you will create problems. <laughs> that should be the rule. Not don't get intoxicated, period. Don't take intoxicants, period. Right? Buddha should just be more precise. Do not use, you know, things to beautify yourself to the point that you become very vain. <laughs> Why don't the Buddha just say that? Instead of don't, you know. Yeah, so when people try to get around these, find loopholes. <laughs> Gilbert <clears throat> Mitchell says, you know, don't get carried away by these technical terms. It's sort of like, you know, the spirit of these trainings is what we need to take to heart. So likewise, the next set of vocabulary is the vice and downfall. And 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 again, they they then this this uh, vice or downfall or uh, they are vocabulary used specifically, uh, especially in the monastic uh, uh, rules. If you attended the Intro to Buddhism class yesterday, you know I talked about the eight categories uh, of the over two hundred uh, precepts. Uh, they, their severity is different. Uh, what the, the consequences of breaking this precept, or breaking this precept, or breaking this precept? Uh, the the severity is the consequences are are, are treated differently uh, within the monastic community. And so there they develop again uh, this 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 these different vocabulary. They say these are actually they are misdeed, and that one is just a downfall. Uh, and so, <clears throat> uh, not so uh, serious. Again, you know, it's not that Kyoba Rinpoche is saying, you know, all the rules are equally the same, the consequences. He's not saying that. Uh, but he's saying that, you know, when we begin to look at these rules, we look at these things, and we begin to, like, divide them so that you say, oh, this this is more important, this is less important, and this is okay, you know, if you do this, this, uh, oh, no, 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 you should not do then your whole attitude towards the Vinaya precepts of training is one that treats them as burdens, right? You're treating these rules of training as burdens rather than liberative. You are treating them as Almost like you know, you become a child, and you 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 have this trauma of being told by grown ups, <clears throat> you cannot do this, 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 and then you as a child, why? Don't ask me why. You cannot do. <laughs> so so we if we have that attitude towards the Buddha's precepts, the precepts the Buddha gave, then we have the wrong attitude towards these these prescriptions and proscriptions mm. Mm. And so here it says the vice and downfalls are not different but the same mm, as well so let's look at Kempo Kumbel's uh, commentary the exalted Buddha <coughs> is not a creator like Shiva and so on, like these great gods of other religious traditions, whom followers of other religious traditions, you know, they have creator God. And so creator God, right, make the rules. Why is killing wrong? Because I say so. <laughs> I decided, you know, it's wrong. So don't do it. It says, no, <clears throat> the exalted Buddha is not a creator like Shiva and so on. 
Instead, he sees directly the general and individual characteristics of the infallible causes and results just as they are. So meaning he sees directly both the general and the specific characteristics of the workings of karmic causality. He understands and he sees clearly the principle and the way in which karmic causality works, just as it is, just as they are. And therefore, through great compassion, and without distinguishing sentient beings as close to him and distant from him, without distinguishing, oh, I like them, I don't like them, <clears throat> He teaches the non-virtues such as killing and so forth, term established. And within this category, <clears throat> a defeat or an access and so forth. So, so, so he says, you know, yes, he uses these different vocabularies on different occasions, you know. But the fundamental point is that he does all of this in order to bring sentient beings to benefit and happiness and to the abandonment of transgressions. Hmm? To the abandonment of the creation of suffering. Hmm? So all these <clears throat> vocabulary, such as a, it's a defeat, uh, it's an access, uh, it's a natural, it's established, right? All of these are just based on circumstance where the Buddha felt that he had to use a different word, a different vocabulary you know, to advise against you know, doing this or doing that. And that advice is based on him seeing that these types of actions are harmful. They are productive of suffering. Although the natural and established non-virtues are different aspects, you can look at them from different angles and therefore they are different in their aspects, they are the same <clears throat> in their essential nature in that they are things to be discarded, things to be abandoned. Thus, Chikten Sumgan teaches that the established non-virtues and the natural misdeeds have the same essence. And then 3.12, for this reason, the cause of both vice and downfall is non-virtue. And the result is finding yourself in the lower realms. So they are not different or distinct, but the same. It is said in the divisions of the Vinaya, the so-called downfall makes one fall down to the worst of the lower realms, the hell realms, the animal realms, the hungry ghost realms, the lower realms. Therefore, they are called that which makes one fall down. Thus they, whether you call it vice or misdeed or evil deed or downfall, are classified as a single essence but having different aspects. Single essence, what is the essence? The essence here is no matter what, you know, no matter who does them, they are causes of suffering. So, on, so likewise, you know, no matter what, no matter who does it, there are also causes of happiness. Doesn't matter they are Buddhist or not Buddhist. If they create causes of happiness, they experience the results of happiness. It doesn't matter advance or uh, beginner practitioners, you create causes of happiness, we experience results of happiness. Cause and result, karmic principle, karmic causality. So this is statement uh, 11 and 12. So for this week, uh, we stop here. Then we continue uh, next Monday. <clears throat>